This is part three in our series of lectures on section 4.3. In this lecture, we're going to look at another example involving surjectivity. So let's consider the function from this set to this set. So it takes an x, which is bigger than or equal to 2 and strictly smaller than 3, into the set of numbers from 0 to infinity, and it maps such an x to x minus 2 over 3 minus x. So this is somehow related to the function that we looked at in the previous video, except we've modified the domain, we've restricted our domain, and we've also modified our codomain. This is the set of non-negative real numbers. In the uh, previous video, it was the set of all real numbers. So your task is to decide if f is surjective and write a proof that your conjecture is correct. So let's look again at the graph of this function, and um, that should give us a clue as to what our conjecture should be. Here's the function we're considering in this video. In the previous video, we considered an extension of this function, and so the graph of this function is just going to be part of the graph of the function that we drew in the last video. And so I think I can do it fairly quickly. Um, it looks like the following. It's zero here, and it runs up to infinity there. So I think the graph of the function makes it pretty clear that this function is surjective. Given any height, given any y value, you can certainly find an x value which takes that height. And so our conjecture should be that this is surjective, and we shouldn't have any trouble proving that that is in fact the case. But before we go back to the proof, we should uh, do one calculation. Suppose we let y equal x minus 2 divided by 3 minus x. Then we should try to solve for x in terms of y. We're going to need to use that result in our proof. So if we cross multiply, we get 3y minus xy equal x minus 2. Um, so 3y plus 2 equals x plus xy, which is x times 1 plus y. And so x is equal to 3y plus 2 divided by 1 plus y. Okay, so we'll make use of that fact when we do the proof. So in order to prove that it's surjective, I've written down the working definition. For all y in our codomain, we have to produce an x in our domain such that f of x is equal to y. So here's an outline of what we have to do in order to show that f is surjective. According to the calculation I did uh, earlier, um, y is equal to this if and only if x is equal to this. This was the uh, what we got when we solve for x in terms of y. So we're going to start the proof by giving ourselves a y, and then we're going to have to produce an x for which f of x is equal to y. So the x that we're going to choose is going to be this one. Once we have that x, we actually have to do two things. First of all, we have to show that f of x is equal to y, but we also have to show that that x lies in this interval, and that's something that students often forget to do. So that'll be part of the proof. So why don't you put your video on pause and see if you can write up the proof of this, and we can compare solutions when you come back. So here's my proof. I start by giving myself a y in the codomain, the set of all non-negative reals. I choose my x to be this, and then it's a matter of proving that it works. So f of x is what? Well, f takes an x to x minus 2 divided by 3 minus x. So I've substituted this for x, and you can see that after you get a common denominator and simplify, it really does come out to be this y. So it remains only to prove that this x lies in the given domain. So you have to prove that this quantity is, lies in this interval. If you try to give a direct proof of that, you're going to find that pretty much your entire proof will be written backwards from what it should be written. 
So in order to avoid that problem, we're going to argue by contradiction. Uh, I'm going to argue um, that it's impossible for this quantity, quantity to be smaller than 2, and it's impossible for it to be bigger than or equal to 3. So suppose first that it's smaller than 2. If you cross multiply, that gives you this, and that simplifies to y less than 0, which is a contradiction because, remember, y was non-negative. On the other hand, suppose that this quantity is bigger than or equal to 3. In other words, it's on the other side of 3. Once again, cross multiply. That gives you this. The three y's cancel, and you get 2 bigger than or equal to 3, which is impossible. And therefore, that proves that uh, our x does indeed lie in this interval. And that completes the proof.